Hey y'all, welcome back to the Daily AMG and welcome to my July book haul. Yes, it is nearly the middle of August. I apologize. Things have gotten, I will say, a little overwhelming for me and I'm trying to work on when I get overwhelmed, not just completely shut down. I just filmed a get ready with me video, which is not something that I typically do, but it talks about the future of the daily AMG.com in my real life and on Instagram, etc. I have asked where is all your content gone or that you've noticed that I totally revamped the daily AMG.com. So it's linked down below go check it out. Um, it is, we were having a relaunch. We being me, hmm. <laughs> Um, I guess, and my husband, because spousal support is a, a, a alive and well during this whole process. Um, but yeah, so September, we're now I'm saying we, as in me and my friend Jenny, we are bringing you something super special on the Instagram starting in September. It's something that I have been wanting to do and I reached out and I said, what does your September look like? And she was like, girl, I'm yours. And so, yeah, that's another video that I am sorry that I just totally like spoke about. And then I'll, I'll, I don't know which one of these is coming out first. So if you see one titled chatty, get ready with me on the future of the daily AMG something like that click it and I will try to go back and link it if this comes first and vice versa let's get into the books I've had coffee I've had half a cup but it's getting into the bloodstream so we're good it's also like nine o'clock on a Saturday all right let's go okay we'll start with mysteries I categorize these and so then I just kind of stacked them stacked them up whenever I put my laptop here I just like shifted everything and then started like stacking so this is what we're going with and the first book is kind of funny because if you've been watching my book hauls you've already seen this because I actually met the author and had him sign my mass market paperback that I bought at the book signing but I love a trade paperback. This is a dollar at the Dollar Tree, so I thought, why not? I'll just pick this up and then I can gift it to someone or whatever. Or then if I spill coffee on this one, I won't feel as bad because it won't be the signed one. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? Okay, next up we have the new Riley Sager. This is the last time I lied. And I love that it's like one, two, three, four. Five. I don't know. I think it's about five girls. I really like the covers that. Okay. Is Riley Saker a boy or a girl? I feel like it's a boy. Hang on. Wow. Would you like to know what his bio, their bio says? The last time I lied is the second thriller from Riley Sager, the pseudonym of an author who lives in Princeton, New Jersey. Riley's first novel, Final Girls, was a national and international bestseller that has been published in more than two dozen countries. Okay, I see you, anonymity. I think it's a dude. I don't know. Okay, on to historical fiction. I, we read Final Girls in our book club, and I think we all really liked it. Maybe we didn't like, I'm going to say it was one of those like, it's probably like a four star average or like 3.8 or something like that average for all of us. We all definitely said we would read another from the author. Now on to historical fiction. So this is a Mademoiselle Chanel, and this is basically a fictionalized account of Chanel's life. This was also a dollar at the Dollar Tree, and of course, I love anything that is a fictionalized historical account since reading Swans of Fifth Avenue. That is probably like my most favorite of this kind of um, 
genre, if you will, is this a subgenre of historical fiction? The fictionalized account of an actual person's stuff. I also got White Houses. This is by Amy Bloom. I checked this out from the library. I didn't get very far. I returned it to the library and then they had a book sale and they had one for a dollar. And I was just like meant to be. I love presidential. <laughs> you know, I love presidential history. And this is a fictionalized account of Eleanor Roosevelt and uh, Lorena Hickok's relationship. And I am so excited to read this. And then I have Summer Wives by Beatrice Williams. I absolutely love her books. I have a girlfriend who's obsessed and she got me obsessed and I'm so glad because I love her writing. Okay, and then another book. So that was a book of the month book. Um, yeah, okay. The other one was a library. The other one was Dollar Tree. Yeah, I'm trying to tell you where I get these from because I don't want anyone, especially my husband, to think that I spend more than like $40 in books a month because I am super frugal and you have to take advantage of those book sales in your library. So yeah, there are definitely a lot of places, a lot of ways to save money on books if you are a major book lover. All right, and now for the literary fiction. Okay, so this first one is so cool because I picked it up for a dollar at the Dollar Tree and that is one of the Hogarth Shakespeare novelizations and this is The Gap of Time by Jeanette Winterson. Oh hilarious. Okay so Jeanette Winterson has novelized A Winter's Tale by William Shakespeare for the Hogarth Shakespeare series. For those of you who don't know, I have, oh my gosh, and there's this fly and it's driving me crazy. I feel like Elvis. Did anybody else? Oh, I, oh man. When I was a kid, I was obsessed with Elvis and then TBS would always do like a special. <sighs> this is my life. Would always do like this special around his birthday and it would be like days of all the Elvis, you know, all the clam bacon and Viva Las Vegas and you can take and I wanted it all but they also did like behind the scenes and specials and one of them was him in the recording studio cussing out a fly and that was when I decided now I understand Elvis but that's when I was like Elvis is not a good person even though like you have to take my age into consideration I was so mad that Elvis was so mad at that fly and now I feel like I'm totally mad at this fly. I don't know. It rained last night and then the dogs were in and out so I don't know. Oh my gosh. I'm so ready for fall and winter and for all the bugs to die. <laughs> okay, so on to this book which is hilarious because Jeanette Winterson has rewritten a winter's tale and I wonder if it had anything to do with her decision. I don't know. Anyway, so I have been doing this. I have read The Taming of the Shrew and then read Vinegar Girl by Ann Tyler and I have also done... Is that the only one that I have finished? That doesn't sound right. I've read The Tempest and I'm working on reading Hagseed by Margaret Atwood. Maybe that is my second one. That doesn't sound right. Maybe, maybe. So anyways, um, so yeah. So I'm definitely going to save this for winter because that was like my whole plan anyway. But then whenever I found this for a dollar, I was like, I'm going to go ahead and get it. I haven't bought the play yet. I've been doing, hang on, let me grab these. Okay, they just happen to be like on this little shelf right here. Okay, so I've been buying the Barnes & Noble Barnes and Noble Shakespeare. I really like it because you can, oh whoops, hang on. 
I don't know. It just, it has, it's helpful or whatever. I mean, I haven't read Shakespeare since I was in high school, and that's been a little while. And I always loved Shakespeare in a classroom setting. And so I was, when this whole Hogarth thing started, I definitely wanted to do it. But I found it to be, like, so incredibly daunting because I haven't read Shakespeare outside of a classroom setting in a long time. So, yeah. It's been really fun. I have really learned a lot in a self-taught Shakespeare or something. I don't really know. Um, so, yeah. So, this is going to be, I'll read this in the winter, The Winter's Tale. Um, so, yeah. So, I plan to read this in the winter, A Winter's Tale, and then The Gap of Time by Jeanette Winterson because that still just makes me laugh. Okay, except I have another book that I got at the Dollar Tree for a dollar. I'm telling y'all, go to the Dollar Tree. They have, like, a huge section. Um, this is The Year of the Runaways by Sanjeev Sahota, and this was shortlisted for the Man Booker Prize, which you know it was good then, right? Let me look to see what year that was. I've not actually, that was 2015. I've not actually heard of this author and or book so I'm really excited and it's, it has just such a beautiful spine and yeah I don't I don't know anything about it. Painted August by Brenda Bowen. I do not know anything about this either. It was a dollar from the Dollar Tree but it is highly praised as something about like I think this family and or group of maybe moms go to Maine for a month and it's just like gloriously, amazingly, refreshingly awesomeness or whatever. Yeah, that's, that was my review, gloriously awesomeness, whatever. Let me get some more coffee into my bloodstream so that I can speak. Okay, and then I picked up from the library Jennifer Weiner's Fly Away Home. I had not even heard of this one. I recently read her memoir, and it reminded me of how much I absolutely loved her books, like, in the early 2000s. This is from 2010. It never got on my radar, and if it did, I never picked it up. I want to continue to pick up her things, especially when I see them for a dollar at the library. That's amazing. Okay, on to, I think this is my only middle grade book. Book, and this is You Make My Heart Swing Sideways. Look at how cute this little cover is. As I'd never done any of the things country girls in my books did because I wasn't one of them. I was a city in the winter, resort in the summer girl. The closest I ever came to country life was driving past McMurtry's farm. But all that was about to change because I'd never had a summer of freedom before. And I had never met anyone like the girl I'd seen standing in the corn. Next up, these are kind of more YA, I guess. This is Not If I See You First by Eric Lindstrom. And this says, everyone has a secret. Everyone is the secret. And it, that kind of reminded me of... Um, one of us is lying. All of us are liars. What is it called? Uh, by E. Lockhart. Oh, bummer. But anyways, that kind of reminded me of that, just that whole, like, that little blurb on the back or whatever. I, and then next up, I got the Lifeboat Click. I got this for a dollar at the Dollar Tree, even though it's obviously, like, overstocked from Target, so that's cool. This says, all the rules and roads were gone. We were washing slowly away from land, having just undergone a disaster of epic proportions. But our social strata was still in place. And I was at the bottom with the shellfish. I don't know. It just sounds like a cute YA, I hope. Okay, next up I have, I don't know if this is technically YA, I think. Um, this is the Kiss Quotient. And this was actually a July, no, a June book of the month pick. But I got it in July because I kept hearing so many amazing things about it. It is, I think, about a girl who has Asperger's and she wants romance. She wants to know she wants to know what love is, you know, so she hires a guy, I guess, to kind of ex go on that journey with her. So everybody says it's super cute, contemporary romance kind of thing. So I'm here for that. 
Okay, the only classic that I picked up this month was a Penguin classic. This is A Prince of Swindlers by Guy Boothby, and it's so teensy. I really probably should have done this for like one of the readathons that was recently, but I didn't participate in any of them. So hopefully there'll be more and I'll participate. I'll get better about vlogging and stuff with the bookathons because they're bookathons, the readathons because they're so much fun and I really enjoy doing the chicklet-a-thon. <sighs> so yeah, so that was the only classic that I picked up and then the only short story collection I picked up is called Esther Stories and that is by Peter Orner. I if this was they were, those were both a dollar at the Dollar Tree store. All right, next up I have nonfiction, which of course is my largest stack. Imagine that. Okay, so first up I have The Naturalist, Theodore Roosevelt, A Life of Exploration, and The Triumph of American Natural History. Of course, you know, presidential history is something that I absolutely love, but I'm also a huge conservationist. I love to hunt. I know that may strike some of you as odd and or offensive but don't get don't 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 come at me in the comments <laughs> so excited to read this this is by Darren Lund Lundy I'm not certain I apologize it is um, signed I was actually gifted this by a dear friend and I'm so excited to read this I am actually gonna see him tonight and I hope he doesn't ask me if I read it because I haven't yet sorry and so, yeah, I am super excited. And also, there is a, um, oh, that fly is back. About to get all Elvis in here. There's also Thomas Mayer, author of When Lions Roar, The Churchills and the Kennedys. So, like, I already added a book to my TBR from this book. So, winning. Does anybody still say winning? <laughs> That's cool. That's cool. I'm not, um, yeah, I'm not, I'm not up to speed with the, the, the stuffs. Okay, then I picked up On Wheels. This is another short one that I thought would be good for a readathon at some point. And this is by Michael, I think that's Haroyo. Hmm, I'm not certain. But this seems like one of the coolest books. This is basically takes you through all of the cars that he remembers like throughout his lifetime like his grandpa's car his father's car his first car you know those kinds of things I don't know I just find those kinds of things so fascinating I just thought that that sounded so interesting I just love to know where people come from what people what influenced people to become the person that they are I guess I don't know even though I have no idea who that author is I just found that so intriguing and I want to know about all of the cars that have meant something to him in his lifetime. My eyelashes are doing something really weird, like, I don't even know. Okay, so then I picked up Present Over Perfect at the library cell, Leaving Behind Frantic for a Simpler, More Soulful Way of Life. This is by Shauna Nyquist. And I have heard about this book over and over and over again. I see it all the time. That fly oh, I, I almost got it. Um... Brene Brown does the forward, and oh man, there is one woman that can change this world. It's Brene Brown. So anything she's had her hands on, I want to get my hands on. So I am super excited. This kind of reminds me of I don't know if it, I don't know if it does, but like just the what they're saying here makes me think of um, Grace, Not Perfection by Emily Lay, and I. And I read that during July, so I, when I saw this at my library sale, I definitely picked it up because it kind of sounded like it was on that same wavelength, which is something we all could benefit from. There is just too much in this world saying you have to be one way, you have to be perfect and or cookie cutter and or fit this certain mold. And I am here to tell you, no, do your own thing, rock your own, rock whatever jam you got going and do your thing, sister. You'll be so much happier without having to compare because you are your own. There is no one for you to compare to because you are individual. You have no one to compare yourself to. So don't do it. Don't fall into the trap. You are singular. You are the only one of you. Rock yourself. Yeah, you do you girl. Okay, next up I got You Deserve a Drink 
Boozy Misadventures and Tales of Debauchery by Mamrie Hart. I have no idea who this is, but that just sounded like a lot of fun. Then I picked up A Beginner's Guide to Paradise, Nine Steps to Giving Up Everything so you, so you too can move to a Pacific Island, wear a loincloth, read, read a hundred books, build a bungalow, diaper a baby monkey, and maybe, just maybe, fall in love. This is by... Uh, um, this is by Alex Shishinoff. Shishinoff. Oh, I'm sorry. That's like way out. This book over here. Sorry. Isn't it just so pretty? So yeah, that sounds super intriguing, right? It does say individual results may vary. Baby monkey not included. Mm. But I like that humor just right off the bat. That's so much fun. Okay, and then next up I have The Millionaire and the Mummy, Theodore Davis's Gilded Age in the Valley of the Kings. Oh my gosh, he yes. sounds amazing. Oh my gosh, I love Egyptian history, and you mix it with the Gilded Age, and you mix it with a little bit of mystery, and oh man, I can't wait. That just sounds like, yes please. And lastly, yay, now that I have no idea what this video is because my laptop has shut off like three times. Wonderful. Just makes editing a dream. So lastly, last but not least, I have Citizens of the Green Room, Profiles in Courage and Self-Delusion. And this is by the same author that wrote This Town. Can y'all hear that? My husband has a deer feeder that is solar powered. And so, you know, it's like, you know, 930 or whatever. And it scares me twice a day because I am not a deer looking for corn. I am a woman alone in my home. It's not fun. Okay, so this is by the same author of This Town, which I would grab if I could see it just right off the bat on my... No, okay, I'm not going to grab it. But hey, we're back at the White House. We're back behind the scenes at the White House. That's one of my most favorite things to read about. And yeah, this is just a brilliant collection of profiles of Washington's elite and a wannabe elites. So it says, citizens of the green room remind us that great journalism and stylish writing are not only essential to the republic, but also necessary to maintain the citizenry's sanity and humor in the face of made-for-TV government. <sighs> yes, please. Okay. Those are all the books that I picked up in the month of July, and they just add to the complete randomness that I love to read. I hope you have enjoyed this, and don't forget to look for my Get Ready For Me life update thing for what you're for the Daily AMG on YouTube, on the blog, on the Instagram, etc. Have a wonderful day. Bye!